Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. It's homework time today, and I know that just sounds miserable and atrocious, and I'm very, very sorry. I'm going to give you a good head start on the homework that needs to be done, so don't click away immediately just because you heard homework. Uh, I try to give you guys a little bit of something to look up and think about in most of my videos. Today is just going to be exceptionally so because I don't have a clear answer, and I couldn't find anyone else who did. We're in Esther chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Then the king's servants who were within the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you tra transgress the king's command? Now, I'm going to stop right there. We all know, okay, maybe not all of us know, I think the majority of people have probably heard the story of Esther. Haman's the bad guy, tries to kill all the Jews, which obviously was ridiculous and terrible. And we have Mordecai and Esther, Esther the beautiful queen who hid the fact that she was a Jew and eventually unearthed, or unleashed, I guess would be appropriate, the fact that she was a Jew, and Haman swung on the gallows which he had prepared for Mordecai. Spoiler alert! <laughs> We're going to be getting there over the next few days anyway. Um, Esther's just 10 chapters long, so it's not going to take a whole long time to cover it. But in this chapter, we have something really interesting. Again, it's something that I really had not thought about until I reread Esther this time. And the fact that Mordecai would not bow down or pay homage to Haman. Now, the question is why? Haman hadn't done anything at this point to where he was the enemy of the Jews or even the enemy of Mordecai. Um, Mordecai's refusal to bow down to Haman was the reason that Haman was like, you know what, let's kill all the Jews, which is a ridiculous response, and Haman was obviously a villain from that response that came out of his heart. But why wouldn't Mordecai bow to begin with? From what I could tell, when I, I tried looking around online to see if anyone had anything to say, and the first thing that was said was kind of my theory, maybe this bowing down and paying homage to was some kind of worship. I mean, of course, I think, again, most of us know that back in the day, a lot of kings were treated and thought of and reverenced and worshipped as gods. Maybe this bowing down and paying homage to Haman, who wasn't even the king, maybe he was considered a minor deity under the king, possibly. The word there is not worship. To, to bow and to pay homage, that is not worship. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I don't. It's the word in Hebrew is different, and I don't think you can necessarily equate it with worship. So it, it again, it begs the. It, it's a theory. It's a possibility, but it still begs the. But it's not definite. It's not concrete. There is another word that could definitely be used for worship, and that word is not so used here. So it's like. Maybe that's what it was, but we're not sure. We don't know for absolute certain that that's what it was. And also, wouldn't like when Mordecai gets promoted to Haman's position later on, wouldn't people bow down and pay homage to him? When Nehemiah stood before this very king who's talked about in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, because Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer, wouldn't Nehemiah have to pay some kind of homage to the king? Or did he just, was he exempted somehow? I very seriously doubt it. Um, very, very unlikely that he had to at least pay some kind of homage to the king. That's not necessarily worship. And if it was, then why did Nehemiah do it? And he wasn't plastered for it. Um, he said so many times, make my God remember me for good, because he absolutely insisted on obeying the law of the Old Testament and the law of Moses to the T. I can't imagine him bowing down to a pagan king and giving him any kind of worship. That's very unlikely. So again, just as to the question of what's going on here, the other theory that I found out was possibly maybe the term Agagite can be equivalent to a Malachite. Whether, I don't know if it was a mistranslation or a parallelization or any, just a simply equivalent term, but that was a theory that was thrown out there. And Amalekites were the enemies of the Jews. They were never allowed in the congregation, and Saul was actually told to destroy all the Amalekites. He spared the king. Samuel hewed the king of the Amalekites, Agag, to pieces before the Lord. 
and it said that the Lord would have war with Amalek forever. So if he didn't want to bow down and pay homage to him because of that reason, it would make sense, except for tying in the term, um, what was it, Agagite? It, tying in the term Agagite to Amalekite, it seems kind of like a, a stretch to me that doesn't sound plausible or likely. And other people agree with me. Uh, they also feel that it is unlikely for that to be the case. So this is one of those things where there's not a clear answer. And no one up to this point in history has a clear answer. So what do you guys think? I would encourage you to do some of your own research, do some looking up of this matter, see what you can find. Whether it be in books you have on the shelf, a book in the library, or more likely, excuse me, more than likely is going to be an online thing like what I've done here. I usually don't yawn on these short videos. That was very, very unusual. Who knows? Uh, it's still pretty late in the day, so, you know, whatevs. But, guys, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was thought-provoking and maybe it encouraged you to do a little bit of research. I love you, and God bless.